Welcome back. I'm just going to pass it to Mark to see what's up in the NBA. Mark. All right, let's go through some NBA topics right let's now. All right, quick question, guys. Mm. I know they just ended their uh, nine-game losing streak with a win against Atlanta, but what is going on with the Clippers right now? I know they just ended their nine-game, like I mentioned. They missed four, three of the five starters. So actually, now they're missing uh, Patrick <coughs> Beverly for the rest of the year with a knee injury, mm. so he has to have a surgery. They're missing Danilo Gallinari. They're missing the rookie Milos. And like right now, they're not. They're the worst passing team in the NBA too, and <laughs> and they bad. don't really have a bench with exception to Lou Williams. But so my th- my thoughts to you guys: What do you think is going on with the Clippers? Should they end it with Doc Rivers? Should they just rebuild this whole team right now? Trade maybe DeAndre or Blake? Should they restart? What do you guys think of the Clippers? I'll let you go. You start. Okay. Uh, first of all, I was surprised. You know, Blake Griffin uh, stayed with the Clippers. Oh, yeah. He was a free agent. He could have went to a contender. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought once uh, Chris Paul leaves, that would be it for Clippers. Mm-hmm. So I'm surprised he stayed there. Uh, right now, there are rumors that um, uh, DeAndre Jordan would be traded to like uh, a team, mm-hmm. and there's many teams that are interested. Um, of, you know, getting his services. Right now, uh, look like it looks like. Um, you know they're not in cohesive like they're not a cohesive unit because of all the injuries and you know especially the starters. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think uh, Charles Barkley kind of jinxed them a little bit because um, there was a segment in um, you know TNT. Uh, he said that Clippers will make it to the Western Finals. So since then <laughs> they haven't won a game. Oh yeah. Yeah. The Barkley yeah. jinx. Yeah. I think I think you touched upon. An important point. I think you already said it. Fire coach Doc Rivers. I, I really think they just need to change up the whole team. Because mm. ever since Chris Paul left, just it's a testament to the fact that Chris Paul just brought the... Like last year, they, not, they notched up a lot of wins with Chris Paul. And it just shows how good of a player Chris Paul was. Mm. And losing someone like that and no one can really take his leadership, take his passing ability, take his role on the court. I feel like they're just a, a, sh- a, sh- a sinking ship. Like... Blake, I don't know, they, Blake's not enough to do it, and their, their injuries are just too much to, over, to overcome. I think it's time to tank. No, not time to tank. But, like, yeah. even though they didn't want to tank, I think it's hard to even, even though they, they did win recently, I think it's just a bad, bad fight uphill. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Well, like it's, it's, it, it's up to them, but I think it is time to do, to, uh, to end things with Doc Rivers mm-hmm. in a sense that I don't think his coaching style is going to fit anymore with what the uh, this team is and, and I think he's made some bad decisions too in terms of player signings because he's actually the one that you know signed his son to a, a deal <laughs> gave him that gave money, him that money. <laughs> was your allowance. and he just didn't surround he just didn't surround Blake Griffin and yeah. DeAndre with the right pieces and the right players like even though uh, and he he got he got basically nothing back for for Chris Paul, Chris Paul yeah. and and then that you know that tells a lot. You know, everyone thought that Clippers were like the better team in the Staples Center in the La La Land, and it didn't last that long if you really think about it. As even though they were the better team record-wise, people would still rather watch the Lakers. That tells you a lot about a team that is winning, but still they would rather watch the Lakers play. Yeah. Like it's they need to change their culture in there. I mm-hmm. think. Um, if you know the, the the whole DeAndre scenario, he could have he went to Dallas and changed his mind to go back and the play Clippers. for the Clippers, and all of a sudden this happened. So it makes you think about whether you know he regrets doing you know changing yeah. up his mind and playing because now they're all a mess, right? And Beverly's so out too. I just he's out for the saw year. That, so. Yeah. How about how about let's go to speaking of injuries, right? Like mm-hmm. I mentioned before, right now there's actually a lot of injuries that's happening in the NBA, not specifically actually on the West. A lot of stars actually are getting injured. Like I mentioned to you guys, Conley's out for uh, with oh, an Achilles injury, yeah. soreness. Millsap is, might be out for two to three months with that wrist injury. Gobert is out for four or six weeks with that knee injury, and Leonard's still out with the. And these are, if you think about it, these are teams that I'm mentioning. These are playoff and like should be playoff teams. Um, so my question to you guys is, which team should we worry about with regards to missing their star players? Like because in the West, if you're missing games. If you're losing games, it's harder to come back because there's so many good teams mm-hmm. that you can't just let your team slip or else their playoff chances are gone, right? Mm-hmm. So which of these teams should we worry about? Um, I'd say the Grizzlies, uh, 
like you said, Conley, he's injured. Uh, he's their main focus, um, along with uh, Marcus Hall. So um, they don't have like a starting point guard right now. Um, uh, what else? Uh, oh yeah, Gobert. So yeah, he's a big he's a big piece for Utah as well. If Utah wants to make it to the playoffs, which yeah. I doubt they're gonna make it this year, because there's so many competitive teams in the West, mm. then it's really gonna be tough for them to make it. Um, other than that, the the biggest injury by far was Hayward. You know, within minutes of the season, this guy you know um, breaks his um, you know foot. So yeah. I would say what a, some good points. I would say OKC. Okay, I feel like. Just watching the game yesterday, mm -hmm. um, see, I don't know if it was a drama thing or like um, thing for the for the TV where their coach kept Westbrook and kept the big three on there while they're playing Golden State. But I feel like maybe that was kind of like, why would you leave that those players on? Do you really need all three to sustain that lead? It kind of makes me think like, how would if one of them went down and I feel like the biggest key piece in OKC is George because George is so good defensively and he's he sets the pace defensively and offensively. He, he was the one, I think he's he the best two-way player if you yeah. really watched him play. Sure. I've been watching a lot of OKC games because yeah. I have George in fantasy mm -hmm. and he's the best two-way player. I know best. Westbrook is a beast mm -hmm. but he's defensively he lo he locked down Lost. Kevin Durant in a lot of possessions and mm -hmm. he did he had some key steals too. Absolutely. Yeah. So now I'm thinking, what if he he like if George were to go down? I'm just saying, like, what yeah. if he were, especially since OKC is gunning for doing well in the playoffs. Yeah. If George were to go down at any moment, I feel like Westbrook is a beast, but there's no one in in the bench on OKC that would replace George. Yeah. And George's tenacity and George, he made some clutch threes, clutch plays. The whole game. Yeah. The, who would? What would you say? Who? Yeah. What's your What's your take yeah. on this? My take. What my, my take is like. I'm taking the best player that's injured right now mm. out of all the, the ones I mentioned, which is mm. Leonard, mm. Uh, because we have no timetables of his return. Yeah. We don't actually know really which... Uh, the Spurs have been doing this for years. They've never been really clear about people's injury. Uh, and I, I would be more concerned about Leonard because of the fact that uh, he's their best player and he's their MVP. Right? And they're more of a title contending team as opposed to the Jazz with missing Gobert or maybe Conley or Millsap. So I'm concerned with Leonard because without Leonard, I know Spurs are doing okay, but they're not going to go far in the playoffs without Leonard, without getting him back into ball game shape, into mid-season form, into his peak, because he's supposed to be playing at his peak right now. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm um, sorry to hear what happened to him during the playoffs. It might have affected the way, you know, his body might have compensated in many ways to uh, accommodate his injury that happened during the playoffs. Uh, yeah. During that, you know, when he stepped on Zaza, so maybe this is like a result of that, but his body compensating for that injury that he suffered, the ankle injury. Mm -hmm. So I would be more concerned about Leonard really. And that's, first. that's my team too. Yeah, that's yeah. such a dirty play. Spurs. So he stepped hope he gets on Zaza, back or did yeah. Zaza? No, okay, that's. But now they <laughs> changed, they changed. They called it oh, the yeah. Zaza rule now, but yeah. where they changed. They actually called the it the Zaza rule. Yeah, it's a flagrant foul when you oh. um, when you land on someone's. Uh, when you step on someone's uh, boundary when shooting, it's called the Zaza rule now, and right. it's a flagrant foul. So. Wow. Okay, I'd like to step on your on your talk right now because <laughs> hey, we're finished. Uh, what would you like to say as we're ending the show, friends? I'd just like to say thank you again for um, you know inviting me here. Uh, it's always you know a good time with you guys, and um, you know um, for anyone out there that hasn't uh, followed uh, Pinoy Crossover in any social media. Follow them on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, any type of social media. Oh, man. This is a Ooh. promo, man. Yeah. Marky Mark, what would you like to say before we end off? I just want to thank the fans. And, uh, you know, I think fans are coming as well today, mm -hmm. sharing his thoughts about, you know, and repping his old school basketball jackets, you know, representing the Bulls and the three-peat that they had twice on both sides, right? Yeah, Left twice, and yeah. right. Yeah. So always nice to have fans. All right, and hey, I'd like to say thanks to everyone. We have some big projects coming up too, some secret projects. Um, broadcast, there's going to be a broadcast, league broadcast. Um, stay tuned. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in and stay balling.